very grateful to Vita Icon G and the Vita Icon G Studio for their inspiring and generous presence at CBS and MIT. And we are looking forward to their presentation this evening. Uh, Vita Conci is uh, one of the most important figures in art and architecture today. From uh, his days as a poet in the early uh, 60s to his seminal performance work in the 70s to the large scale architectural projects in recent years, Conci has pushed from one discipline to the next, approaching each as a kind of challenging new vocation. This is perhaps uh, a unique occasion in which uh, Vita Akonchi will speak, present uh, uh, the work together with the members of uh, the studio. In uh, his presentation, uh, I assume Vito may tell us, among other things, this story of his poetic philosophical journey from art in art gallery through art in public space, to art as architecture, fashion, and to other fields of art of design. The three members of his studio, Sarina Basta, Gareth, Ricardi, and uh, David Nunes, will hopefully speak, talk, uh, about the project they have been involved with. The creative energy of a country studio is driven by an open process that inspires the evolution from one person's project and one person's interest to many, from many into many more. This is one among many methodological artistic reasons for our interest and joy in hosting with our country studio. In correspondence, with Mark Taylor, uh, Vito Aconci wrote. Because art is desperate, it needs to separate itself from all other things that are non-art. It can't survive without a frame, or a pedestal, or a vitrine, or a wall, or a floor, or a room, or a label, or a plaque. Architecture is different. Architecture survives by breaking the frame, or more precisely, by melting the frame. Architecture persists when clothing elapses into furniture, and furniture, furniture elapses into house, and house elapses into city, and city elapses into land. This thing is yet another reason why we are very happy to see all of you here. The studio's uh, intelligent, sensitive, and imaginative eye, the perceptive and generous approach to each place the work they work with, is pointing to us, whether we are artists, architects, or planners, what it is to see, whom it is to meet, and from whom it is to learn in our institute. As in the non-public art and architecture, their entry to seemingly familiar place makes this place feel unfamiliar and pregnant with new creative, cultural, and existential potential. During their presence, the Vita Aconchi Studio will be meeting and establishing preliminary working ties with fellows, graduates, uh, graduate students, and Europe students, faculty, <coughs> students of our Center for Advanced Visual Studies and Visual Arts Program, the Aga Khan Program in Islamic Architecture, students and faculty from other departments and programs in School of Art and uh, Architecture. The two-day meeting agenda is incredible. It's actually it's similar in some ways to the agenda of students and faculty at MIT. But when I read this, uh, it still impresses me. They will be uh, speaking and uh, discussing 
their interest and their ideas with the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab, including Robotic Lab, Department of Material Science and Engineering, a Microphotonic Center, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Short Wrap Weaving Room Section, and the Ambient Intelligence Group, who has beautiful names here <laughs> for various uh, programs and uh, research groups, the Human Dynamics Group, the Computer and Culture Group, of the media lab. What uh, at CBS hold our hopes is that uh, with the continuing support of the School of Architecture, Planning, MIT's Council, Council for the Arts, who helped with uh, bringing the studio here, the media lab, uh, and others, the studio will come back and continue uh, their work with our students, faculty, researchers uh, in our programs, laboratories, <coughs> and research groups at MIT. Here at MIT, there are materials, processes, techniques, and what is most precious, people with their new ideas, skills, and knowledge. Here, there are those with whom young architects, designers, and artists might wish to work together, with whose knowledge and skills they might wish to become familiar. This is the way through which an informed artistic and design work by cross-disciplinary teams can be born. Our agenda here at CBS is to create intellectual and organizational conditions for such a cross-disciplinary artistic and design work. Uh, your excellent work in art and design, Vito, Sarina, Gerrit, and Zedario, as well as your open, generous, and generating approach to the process is helping us enormously in this agenda. We would like to thank you for being here, for sharing your work, and for your interest in what you do. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, as, as Christoph said, uh, the studio is here, at least part of the studio is here, to, here together. Not everybody is at this table right now. Uh, Serena Basta is to my left, Dario Nunez to my right. Dario's been with the studio the longest time. Dario's been with the studio since, uh, since 1990, 1990, 1997. Serena's been with the studio for the last two years. And she's introduced some stuff to the studio that we probably wouldn't have done if she wasn't if she wasn't there. We're thinking more now about about clothing, about 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 products. Uh, uh, I mean, ideally, the way the studio likes to work is, and I think you know, one one thing that drew me gradually from art to design is that is that design allows you to deal with potentially all the occasions of every day of every day of every day of every day life uh, the studio work you know the way the studio doesn't work is uh, I start a project I I, uh, I have an idea for a project and Mark, oh Maybe just try a little louder for, for a bit. You have a mic? Yeah, I have a mic. Is it on? It doesn't seem to be on. I don't know. We'll just speak louder for we'll just talk Really? Louder. If I talk if I speak louder, does that help? Shout. No. <laughs> I think we should shout. Uh, is there a particular light that's supposed to be on here? Because it's not. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> what? Say that again? I, I, didn't, I didn't hear. It's just only going to the camera. Can we just get closer? To <clears throat> okay. So, so in other words, we don't have a mic for this room. No. 
Okay, I, I somehow assumed this was the mic. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> the way the studio doesn't work is I have an idea for a project, everybody else carries it out. The way the studio, maybe it'll work better if I stand. Uh, the way the studio does work is maybe I start a project off, not always, but maybe I start a project off uh, with a general method, a kind of general idea. Then we talk a lot, we argue a lot, we discuss, we argue, we, uh, uh, we, whatever that project started from becomes a very different thing once we work, once we work on it together. Uh, <clears throat> obviously the, the work, oops, the work didn't start as, as, de, as design. And I want to give a quick survey of how, how work, how work got to design. Uh, my, uh, yeah, I should talk about backgrounds of people. Uh, uh, Dario, Dario, Dario is an architect. Serena is, Serena is from an art, ba an art background. Uh, a background, a background, a background of, uh, of, uh, being an art, an art, an art curator. Kind of interestingly, and I, I, I find significantly that, uh, Design starts to, I think, infect everybody who's in the studio, and I think Serena has probably always been a designer, but maybe didn't realize it <laughs> enough until we started working. We started working to working together at the studio. Uh, my work came. My work started not as not as architecture, not as art, but as but as writing. Until 1968, stuff appeared in a context of writing, context of poetry. So stuff of mine did begin with space, but it began with the space of a space of a space of a page. Uh, I was concerned with questions like, uh, what makes you move from left margin of the page to right margin? What makes you turn from one page to the next page, next page, etc.? I felt towards the end of the time I was writing that I couldn't use on the page a word like tree, a word like chair because this referred to another space, a space off the page. Whereas I could use on the page words like there, then, at that time, in that place. In other words, words that directly referred to my activity of writing on the page, your, your activity of reading the page. Uh, <clears throat> gradually, it, something very obvious became clear to me that if I was so interested in movement, if I was so interested in travel, why limit that movement to an eight and a half by 11, by 11 piece of paper? There's a floor out there, there's a ground out there, there's a street, there's a city. So stuff, stuff changed in 1969, changed context from writing context to, from writing context to an art context. Why an art context? Because at that time, uh, I think what interested, what interested a lot of us in art was that art seemed to be a non-field field. Art was a field that didn't have any specific characteristics of its own, except for the fact that it was called art. So art was a field into which you could import from other fields. You could import from psychology, from sociology, from history, from news. When I started doing stuff in an art context, the, my starting point was that all my life up until that time, I had been used to thinking that I knew what my ground was. My ground was this piece of paper in front of me. Now I didn't have that ground anymore. Uh, <clears throat> so now that I didn't have that ground, what gives me a reason? What gives me, now that I'm in real space, instead of on a piece of paper, what gives me a reason to be there? What gives me a reason, what gives me a reason to move? One, exa one example of early stuff, a piece called Following Peace, done in 1969, done for a program called Streetworks, in which a number of people were asked to do a piece over the period of a month, a piece involving the street, specifically New York streets. The piece I did involved a very simple scheme. Each day for the month, I would pick out at random a person, a person walking, a person in the street. Each day then I would, <clears throat> each day then I would follow a person, follow a person each day until that person entered a private place, home, office, whatever. So from page of the space, I went to street space. Uh, the way I was thinking of pieces at that time, I, was, I, I think the terms I had was 
something like I, a person, an agent, attend to it, a world considered as if it's out there? How do I key myself into that world? How do I tie myself into that world? Gradually, it became clear to me that maybe I was cheating. I'm using my own person in pieces, but I'm not making use of the personness of my person. I'm using my person as a kind of uh, moving integer that's at the service of this external scheme. So stuff started, started to change in 1970. Uh, uh, rather than focus on it, a world considered as if it's out there, I start to focus on me. Uh, uh, so the space again changed from page space to street space to space of, space of, space of the body. Uh, a piece called Trademarks, biting myself, biting as much of my body as I could reach. Uh, once I had bite mark, once I had a bite mark, I could apply printer's ink to the bite mark and make bite prints the way you normally make finger fingerprints. Uh, <clears throat> uh, after doing pieces like this for a while, and what interested me at first in these pieces was that I thought of themselves, I thought of them as a kind of self-reliance. I had only myself to work on, to work with. I didn't need, I didn't need, I didn't need anything else. After a while, what I started thinking, what I thought, what I started by thinking as self-reliance, I started to think is probably a kind of isolation, self-isolation. So I had to bring other people into the piece, into pieces, more specifically, I had to bring you, the viewer, in. So the pieces, so that again, the kind of space changed. Not the space of the self, not the space of the body, but a kind of relation space, interrelationship space. One example, a 1972 piece called Seedbed, conventional gallery room, about 25 feet wide, uh, about 45 feet long. Halfway, halfway across the room, the floor becomes a ramp. The floor rises to a height, to a height of about three feet at the at the far wall. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the piece is done for a number of days over over a a a two week two week two week period. The ramp is a a continuation of the floor. Person enters the gallery, probably without thinking about it too much walks up the ramp as a continuation of the floor. Uh, for the eight hour day from opening time of the gallery to closing time of the gallery, I'm underneath the ramp. I'm moving around under the space where viewers are walking. I'm trying to, <clears throat> I'm trying to constantly masturbate. In order to do so, I use viewers as help. Help in the sense that I hear viewers' footsteps on top of me. I can build sexual fantasies on those footsteps. Those sexual fantasies can keep my masturbation going. Every now and then, the masturbation reaches climax. Viewer on top of the ramp might be thinking something like, oh, he's done this with me. He's done this for me. In retrospect, this was probably the beginning, probably the beginning of architecture uh, in, my, in, my, in my work. I was part of, I was part of the floor. I was, part, I was part of the room. Uh, the reason, for example, for the eight-hour day, the reason I mentioned the eight-hour day wasn't so much to stress the endurance test quality of the piece, though probably like it or not, like it or not, it was that. It was kind of like uh, uh, an eight-hour eight job uh, each day. Each day for that two-week period, I knew what my task was. <coughs> the reason for the eight-hour day was that it seemed important to me that uh, when the first viewer entered the gallery, I was already part of the floor. When the last viewer left, I was still I was still I was still part of the part of the floor. Uh, it was 1972. Now I started to worry that were my pieces maybe too connected to another time. My pieces were so much about self. Uh, were my pieces part of the language of the 60s? the language of finding oneself, as if the self was a kind of precious jewel that happened to be lost somewhere. But it wasn't the 60s anymore. It was 72, 73, 74, 75. I and a lot of other people had very different notions of self. 
Self wasn't something you could isolate and contemplate. Rather, self was a kind of system of feelers. Maybe self existed only as part of a social system, a cultural system, a political system. So by the mid-70s, work had, work had changed. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't live activity anymore. It was, a, it, was, it was in the form of what people at that time were starting to call a very, very vague, a very, very vague term, insta insta installations. The way I thought of installations were, was that a gallery or museum is a place where people are going to be anyway. Now that people are there, could a piece be used? Could a piece be used maybe to gather people together, form a community? One example, a 1976 piece called Where We Are Now, Who Are We, Who Are We, Who Are We Anyway? You enter the gallery, you enter the gallery by the elevator around the corner of that black, of that black room. The black room was usually used as the main room of the gallery. The doorway is blocked, is block, is blocked off. Uh, next to the black room is a long table, long wooden plank, stool, stools, stools on either side, on either side, on either side of the table. Uh, there's a hanging, there's an audio speaker hanging above the table. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay, there's an audio speaker hanging above, hanging, hanging, hanging above the table. Uh, constant clock ticking. As the clock is ticking, voice comes in. Now that we're all here together, and what do you think, Bob? Now that we've gone as far as we can go, and what do you think, Barbara? Now that we're satisfied, now that we know we failed, etc. It was around this time, I think, that I started to have a really nagging nagging doubt about, about art. This piece, for example, was trying to treat a gallery or a museum as if it was a plaza, as if it was a town square. And I think I knew then that I was kidding myself. A gallery or a museum is never going to be a public space. It's always going to be a private space. If I really thought my work needed a public place, a public space, I'd better find I'd, I'd, I'd better find some way to get there. And the way I tried to do it was, uh, it was obvious to me that there are disciplines that already deal with public space. There's architecture, maybe landscape architecture, product, product design. So I thought, maybe I have to sort of redo architecture for myself. My work has always been about, about the person, about the body. Can I try to think of architecture in terms of the body? Ar obviously, architecture is always in terms of the body. Architecture contains the body. Architecture acts as a kind of platform for the body. But I wanted to do it maybe in a slightly different way. I wanted the, I wanted the body to be the cause of architecture. So these first kind of grouping pieces at architecture uh, in the beginning of the 80s were probably, in retrospect, a kind of uh, uh, rehearsal for architecture, uh, playing architecture, a kind of game of architecture. This is a 1980 piece called called uh, called Instant House. Four flags, uh, um, uh, four panels, American flag covered on the wall, a swing in the middle. If a person sits on the swing, the swing goes down and the panels start to rise rise around the person sitting on the swing, making this instant house. And the instant house is American flag house inside, Soviet flag house outside. So you make one kind of space for yourself as you're sitting on the swing. You make another kind of space as an, anna as an, as an, as an, as an announcement for others. Uh, so for me, this was, a, like I said, a kind of uh, practicing, practicing architecture playing architecture. Uh, <clears throat> but I thought that I'm spending so much effort, I'm spending so much effort making a demonstration of house building, but there's no house left. When you got up from the swing, the panels went down to their original position. I started to think that I needed a place that people could come back to. By the end of the 80s, the, the pieces started to deal with 
probably uh, architectural proto prototypes. This is a 1984 piece called, uh, called Bad Dream House, uh, actually done here at MIT in, 80, in, 80, in 84. Uh, <clears throat> three upside down houses, two upside down houses leaning, tilted against each other so that they support a third upside down house on top. Uh, the house is on the ground, like the houses you conventionally find on the ground, brick facing, shingled roof. They support a glass house, house in, house in, the, house in the air. You enter at either end at the open gable. You sit at or walk past an upside down table, or you go upstairs to what used to be the underside of the house. Now that it's upside down, it's a facing set of seats, bleachers, or you go further upstairs to the glass house, garden house. At this time, I think it was kind of clear that my stuff wasn't art anymore, if it ever, if it ever, if it ever was. If I was, uh, if I was making things like houses, but again, these were playhouses. Uh, you couldn't live there. You could possibly use it as a playground, but you couldn't really inhabit it. So if it was architecture, it was the bare, begin bare beginnings of architecture. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I was thinking if my stuff made, made a place of their own, made houses, maybe they didn't need a gallery space, they didn't need a museum space. But I think maybe a, 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 more, important, uh, a more important perception uh, was, was, was operative at that time. Uh, I, I think I was beginning to realize that I just wasn't interested anymore in an art viewer. And Christoph, I think, was talking, Christoph was talking the same way in his, in, in his introduction. Uh, and by art viewer, I mean when a person enters an art space, that person, in effect, is saying, I am an art viewer. By extension, I'm separating myself from all those others who aren't who aren't art viewers. I realized I was more interested in the casual passerby in the street. I was more interested in the person who stops at something, not because it's announced as art, but because for some reason or other, it, uh, it, it, uh, it means something in that person, or it potentially means something, or at least curiosity interest for that person, for that, per for that person in the street. So, <clears throat> Uh, starting in the mid 80s, and I think one thing that, that was important to me through the 80s is that I was working with a person who I think is in the audience, though I haven't seen him yet. I was uh, uh, a person, uh, an artist named, named Tajuri, John Tajuri, who lives here, uh, was working on pieces for me at that time. Uh, and I started to realize that. Uh, the claim is being made by others and probably by me that these people are building pieces for me. But I started to realize that I'm getting ideas from these people. Uh, for example, John built pieces like uh, Instant House, those movable, those movable pieces. I think I had ideas for those movable pieces for a few years before that, but I didn't have the slightest idea how to do them. Once I met John, the possibility of building them became, became possible. So gradually I realized that this is a collaboration, though I'm not, a, though I'm not, a, though I'm not admitting it. So by the end of the 80s, uh, a country studio started. Uh, I you know, wanted to admit, admit a collaboration, but not just admit it, I wanted, to, I wanted to announce it. I did a show at the end of the 80s, I was still I then, uh, I did a show in 1988 at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and I called the show Public, Public, Public Places. There was a green banner hanging outside, outside the museum with the words Vito Country Public Places. And I think I felt the way, at least the way Jean-Paul Sartre claims uh, Jean Genet, the French writer, felt when as a child he stole, uh, I don't remember, some money, a loaf of bread, and somebody called him a thief. And according to Sartre, Genet from that day on said that if I'm called a thief, I have to become a thief. So when I saw those words, public places associated with them, with my name, I realized there's no turning back. You know, I have to start dedicating myself to public places. And the only way to do that is to start working the way an architect works. I had to work with a group of people. 
I had to work with a group, group of people for two very for two for two reasons. One, I wanted to do I wanted to do I wanted to do architecture, but I really didn't know how. I didn't know I didn't know how to build things. I probably didn't know how to design things. So I needed people around me who could design. Let me let me uh, backtrack for a minute. I think my whole career has been built on the fact, has been based on the fact of. Uh, of not being able to do too much. Uh, uh, for example, <clears throat> I, I, th I think I've always assumed that I really don't have any basic skills. Uh, I, I possibly, I used to say I know how to use the yellow pages. I hope I can now say I know how to use, know how to use the internet. I might not have these skills, but maybe I can find people who do have those skills. Uh, in other words, if uh, when work of mine began in, 19, in 1968, in, in 1969, if it wasn't for the fact that words like conceptual art were starting to be used, there would have been absolutely nothing for me to do. I couldn't paint, I couldn't draw, I couldn't sculpt. Once the words conceptual art were used, I could say to myself, well, I think I know how to have vague ideas, so, <laughs> so, there's, a, so there's a place for me. Uh, okay, skip forward again to the end of the 80s. There was a just as important, maybe more important reason why I felt I had to work with people. Uh, I started to feel that if, if something begins private, it probably can only end private. If I really wanted something to be, to result in a public space, it had to start with at least a semi-public. And public, uh, pub public probably starts with a number three. One is a solo, two is a couple or a mirror image. The third person, the third person starts an argument and public probably begins when an argument, when an argument starts. Okay, so from, from, from the end of the 80s on, uh, I can't talk as I anymore. I have to talk, I have to talk, I have to, I have to talk as we. The work kind of inched its way towards, our, towards architecture. From the beginning, the people who worked for me were architects, were from an architecture background. But even though that was true, you know, I wasn't known as an architect. So the projects we were asked to do weren't real architecture projects, but so-called public art projects. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and the way public art, public art projects exist, at least in the United States, is that when a public building is built, one percent of the budget is allowed is is allotted is allotted is allotted is allotted to art. One example of uh, a public art kind of project. This was the site of a project we built in 1995 at Queens College in New York. The site is a kind of pass-through space in front of the English department building. On either side of the English department building is a pedestal on top of which is a sphere, a three-foot diameter sphere. Those spheres were, were, were our starting point. Starting point in the sense that, uh, a starting point in the sense that these the spheres are, <clears throat> the spheres seem to be trying to make a, a kind of grandiose entrance to what was only the entrance to an English department building. On the other hand, the, uh, the spheres seemed uh, kind of isolated and lonely in the space. So what our project consisted of was to add other spheres to the space, uh, spheres ranging from very small, one foot in diameter, to, uh, to a sphere 12 feet, 12, feet, 12 feet in diameter, ranging through the existing sphere. Uh, the spheres, the spheres are, cut, are, cut, are cut into, so you can walk through a sphere, you can sit inside a sphere. Uh, the spheres are lit at night, uh, so they become, a kind of, they become a kind of gathering place. I tried to believe at that time that there was a reason for public art, that uh, uh, the, uh, since most of the money is spent, on, is spent on the architecture, public art only gets 1% of the budget, I tried to think, well, public art is marginal. Maybe it could make use of its, of its marginal position. Maybe it can be the voice of the minority party. 
maybe if you can think that the built architecture acts as the institution, maybe by proliferating the spheres, as in this piece, maybe, maybe we could provide a kind of disease on a kind of institutionalized architecture. In retrospect, I think that public art can only be, can only be, only be a folly. Uh, one percent of the budget is spent on public art. Another way of putting it is that the art is worth one percent, one percent of the art of the architecture. Uh, <clears throat> I think more recently, maybe our stuff has. Uh, I hope our stuff, at least since the year 2000, has probably has. Maybe I should say possibly, or I hope has become has has become architecture. Everybody in the studio thinks. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing design and uh, design, design, design and architecture. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to go through uh, some examples of the pro of the projects of the of the last four years, five years. Uh, we tend to think of architecture as, uh, I mean, what's important to us is that uh, architecture architecture is an occasion for people. Architecture maybe is in it, hopefully is a kind of activity place for people. I think one fear that joins the studio is that uh, we're afraid that when we design a space, are we necessarily designing people's behavior in that space? And we want to obviously we want to we want to try we want to try to avoid that. Uh, uh, can a space be? Can a space? Be, you know, I mean, the, the great thing about I, I think again, you know, what drew me more and more towards design and architecture was the fact that everybody knows architecture, whether they realize it or not. Everybody knows architecture because everybody's walked up a stairway, everybody's walked through a doorway. Maybe people know architecture because they've been possibly oppressed by architecture. They walk through a doorway that's too narrow. They're under a ceiling that's too low. But in any case, people know architecture with their bodies. They know architecture by traversing it. Uh, <clears throat> we we tend to think of stuff in terms of uh, you know, just as we want a place to be an activity place for people. I think the way we design is thinking of how can we perform an activity? How can we perform a kind of operation on a site? So I want to go through, even though I don't know if I can read these with the existing light, but uh, uh, but maybe I can remember most. We uh, I want to go through these projects uh, uh, by going through a series of operations we seem to do when designing when designing a project. Some projects will be used as examples of 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 uh, each oper each op each operation. Sometimes a project will be used to partially demonstrate one project, then it'll come, one, one, one operation, then it'll, then it'll come back later. Operation number one, make a world, then poke the world, dig into the world, an architecture of holes. This is a project, or the start of a project we're working on now. Um, it's a it's a project for a median in a street in a street in Vienna. They asked us to do a kind of park in this in this in this street. Thank thank you thank you, Jeff. Great, it's perfect. Uh, they asked us to do a park on this on the, on the on this median. They made it clear to us that uh, you had to be able to see through this park from one street to another. Very often, when we're given a directive, we think, well, maybe we can start in the opposite way. If they're telling us to make an open space, maybe we can start by making a closed space. What if we act as if a kind of spaceship has landed, has landed on, this, on, on, this, on this median? So it's a closed spaceship. So now we have to perforate it so you can see through from one side to another. This project will come back later. This is a project we proposed recently um, uh, for Seoul in Korea. It was a competition uh, which we didn't win. It was a, a, a it was a competition for a performing arts center in Seoul. Uh, the performing arts center was going to be, was going to be on an island. Uh, the island is a flood is a flood is a floodable island. Uh, <clears throat> uh, their, their directive was 
the base of the island maybe could be used for, for landscaping, whereas the, uh, the performing arts center should be raised at the top part of the base. But we thought if this base, if this base is floodable, maybe you know, it's, it's only going to kill the landscape. So could we think of this base of the island almost as a kind of alien, alien planet? It's a place of craters, a place of holes, so people can find places to be within these holes. Uh, this project, too, will come back later. Uh, in the beginning of 2002, uh, like probably many other people, we made a theoretical proposal for a new World Trade Center. We proposed a World Trade Center uh, full of holes. Our starting point was that if a building nowadays is going to be exploded anyway, maybe, maybe a building nowadays should come pre-exploded, already exploded. So uh, we took the original site of the World Trade Center, raised it to a height of 110 stories high. So now you have more of a volume, more of a mass than the original World Trade Center ever was. You have more private office space than anybody could possibly need. So we shoot cones through it making this building full of holes. This project will come back, will come back later. Uh, operation, operation number two, overlay, screen, camouflage, a second skin. This was a building where we uh, did a clothing store in Tokyo in 2003 for a group of designers called United Bamboo. This modular system is a system that's conventionally used in Japan uh, for houses, for residences. The United Bamboo people worried that this was never going to look like a store. It was always going to look like a house. So we thought our first step had to be to screen it, uh, put a mesh screening over it. The glass facades push in or bulge out through the, through the mesh. Uh, the clothing store is on the ground floor. Upper floors are our offices. On the bulging facade on the upper floor, there's a projection screen. When you're inside the store, if you're trying on United Bamboo clothes, if you like the way you look, you can have yourself photographed. You become the model for United Bamboo clothes. This project, too, will come back later. Um, <clears throat> another example of a kind of screening system, a gallery we did in New York in 2002. The gallery was part of a uh, part of uh, 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 the gallery dealer's home. A steel wall starts outside the doorway, comes inside. Uh, the, the gallery dealer said that this was only going to be a temporary gallery. So we thought we can't change the walls. We could only screen the walls, cover the walls. So we cover the walls with, the, with expanded metal panels. As a byproduct, we, we got a kind of universal hanging system. You don't have to make holes in the walls. The expanded metal is all, all, all holes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, another project we're working on, we're working on now, a facade in Milan, a facade for a building in Milan. Uh, we were asked to do a facade for a building that already had a facade, uh, which made us think that how can we think of this and. Uh, uh, you know, the way we thought of it uh, was maybe we can reclothe the building. Maybe we can put a kind of drape over the, over the building, uh, uh, unfold a kind of drapery over the building. There's a private apartment on the roof, so pull the drape down. There are obviously entrances on the ground. Pull the drape up. This project, too, comes back, comes back later. Operation number three. Uh, bubble, wave, soft architecture, and architecture of flow. Back to the United Bamboo, Bamboo store. Uh, uh, you enter between, between, two, between two mirrors. The, uh, the doorway pushes in, hopefully as if to sort of welcome you into the store. We tried to make a store that was as soft as clothing, as soft as skin. So the, the material in the store is PVC, the material that's usually used for projection screen, rear screen, rear screen, rear screen projection. PVC on the ceiling, pull it down to make a wall, pull it out to make a counter, make shelves by, by pulling out, pushing back in. 
since it's projection screen material, we don't have to light the shelves from outside. We can have lights. We can have lights within the shelves. It's a very sm the store is in a very small space, about 40 feet long, about 15 feet wide. So we thought we could use all the space, all the space, all the space we could get. Anytime there was a non-structural wall, we got rid of the wall and made a curving glass alcove outside the store. The hanging clothes are in the are in that alcove. They come in. They come in. They come into the store. Operation Operation Number Four: uh, uh, Continuous surface, endless space. Uh, a piece done in the a piece done in two, in, two, in two thousand, an attempt to make a to make a, a, a seat, to make a bench, based on the notion of a moibi, of a moibi, of a moibius strip. So the back of the seat twists to become the seat, twists, twists continuously to become the back of the seat. Outside twists to become, to become inside. Uh, you sit outside this circle, you move over, you're inside the circle. At around the same time, we were asked to uh, we were asked by, UN by UNICEF and World Health Organization to, uh, uh, to design a playground uh, that could be produced in multiples. We, uh, just like the Moebius strip is a, is a, is a, is a, is a figure from, from topological math, we used the, the notion of a Klein bottle. Uh, kind of assuming everybody knows what a Klein bottle is, but the way a Klein, if somebody doesn't, the way a Klein bottle works, conventional bottle, neck of the bottle. In the case of the Klein bottle, neck extends out from the bottle, turns around, goes back in. So it's a kind of three-dimensional version of a Moebius strip. We tried to make a playground, uh, a, a Klein bottle with four necks. Children, children enter, enter in four possible ways. Uh, it's transparent, it's perforated. Uh, children climbing outside can come face to face with children climbing inside. You can slide from outside to inside and vice and vice and vice versa. Operation <clears throat> Operation Number Five: Push and Pull. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is a project that was built in Memphis in the beginning at the beginning of 2004. It's outside or at the edge of a performing arts center in Memphis. There's a leftover space outside of the Performing Arts Center. It was suggested to us that could we possibly turn this leftover space into a plaza, a place where people might go out of the Performing Arts Center at intermissions. The way we began was uh, the Performing Arts Center partially extends over this leftover space. So we tried to begin as if we were standing under this overhang. Could we throw something out? Could we fling something out into the air, fling something like a fluid out into the air? But whatever we fling has to stand up, so we pull it down to make columns. At the same time that we pull it down to make columns, we push it up, push it up to make a funnel. Sunlight comes in like uh, the spotlights on the stage inside. At night, the sunlight is replaced by artificial light. Another funnel is pulled down towards the entrance. It lights. It lights the entrance. Uh, <clears throat> you're going you're, you're to talk about Fulton Street, you know, so let me let me skip over. Let me skip over. Really? Uh, okay. Uh, 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 an, uh, another example of push and pull. Uh, we made a proposal for a uh, uh, basically a kind of subway station in New York. It was being built by. It was being built by uh, by uh, Nicholas 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 Grimshaw. The Grimshaw space ha uh, had this dome. Apparently, the dome is gone from his space. So we're not the only people who are told what to do. Everybody is uh, told what not what not to do. Um, uh, inside the dome is an is an is an is an atrium. Uh, so what we tried to do was could we take this atrium space and kind of Turn it, turn it in on itself. Uh, turn it, it, turn it in on itself to make a kind of space, space, space within the space. This project, this project will come back, will come back later. Back to the Seoul Performing, performing Arts Center. On this Mars-like landscape is this spaceship-like performing, performing arts center. Uh, we thought 
we thought we would make spaces, theater spaces, concert halls, by sucking the space into it, into it, into itself, uh, so that as this as this surface, uh, rather a surface, sucked into itself to make a space, to make a number of spaces. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that uh, they had they had suggested they had suggested landscaping the island, since we had no landscaping on the island because it was floodable. Once we sucked in these spaces, the concert hall, et cetera, was in the sucked in space, and the concert hall, et cetera, was surrounded by an indoor, an indoor landscape. So you walked into a theater, into a concert hall, through the, through the landscape. Operation, operation number six, <clears throat> not, an, not, uh, not an end, but a medium, not an object, but an instrument an architecture of its surroundings. A proposal we made last year for the Atlanta airport, uh, the proposal was for the transfer corridor, corridor of the, air, of the airport. Uh, it was important that uh, it separated people who were getting off a plane, getting off a plane, leaving the airport, from people who were getting off a domestic flight, switching to an international flight, or vice, vice versa. Uh, so it had to be a closed wall, but we thought it didn't necessarily have to be as closed as all that. Maybe it could join people even though it was closed. So we took the idea of the existing wall and waved it, waved it, waved it, waved it in and, in and out. So that person sitting, for example, is sitting next to a person who's sitting on the other side of the wall. So they're sitting next to each other, even though they're on, they're on separate sides of the wall. Uh, we use the combination of transparent material and mirrored material, so that as you looked from one, one passage to another, uh, you could see yourself, but through the mirror, uh, you could see yourself through the mirror uh, at the same time that you saw, that you saw another, another person on the other side of the wall. So you might see this other person with your head or your feet or your, 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 your arms. Uh, <clears throat> another example of a mirrored space, back to the Memphis project. Uh, the surface, both inside and outside, is mirrored. Uh, the structure folds down at the base of the columns to make seating. But you can also enter, enter the columns. Uh, uh, again, mirrored, mirrored both outside, both outside, both outside and inside. Inside, as you're sitting inside, inside the column, uh, the sky is reflected down on the circular wall around you. So it's as if you're sitting inside a room, a room, a room of sky. Uh, operation, opera, operation, not thanks. Operation, operation number seven, split separate planes, strips, strands, back to the Milan project. Now that we have this extra facade, it's got to do something that the, first facade, that the first facade didn't do. So the facade can split by, uh, operating, uh, by operating a lever inside the office space. You can, uh, you can, open, you can open this screen covering. You can, you can give it larger openings to bring in more sunlight, smaller openings to bring in to bring in to bring in less. Back to the uh, <clears throat> back to the Vienna Gertel project. Our second step was once we started with this closed space. Our second step was to make this series of planes. The planes were basically sandwiches of mesh. Planting planting grows inside these sandwiches. Uh, holes. <coughs> Holes are shot through these planes. <clears throat> the, holes, the holes carry walkways, elevated walkways. They make an amphitheater space. Uh, they, make a play, they make a playground space. Another example of strips, uh, a project, a project we, we proposed for uh, the Novartis Pharmaceutical Company uh, 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 three, three years ago. Uh, the competition was for uh, uh, a parking garage for a thousand cars, 
and an entry gateway for the campus. One note about this project. Sorry? One, one note, or, or, or maybe you could make it. You want to make a note? Because you brought it up even more no, clearly than I did. Okay. Uh, one note about, the, about, this, about this project. Uh, one reason we were interested in this competition is that we were competing against uh, some architects we paid a lot of attention to, uh, foreign office architects, Zaha Hadid. Uh, it turned out nobody won the competition, but I think, I think nobody should have competed for the competition. Uh, it was a competition for the Novartis Pharmaceutical Company, you know, a, a company that spends most of its time uh, running campaigns against, 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 against generic drugs. Sometimes when you're designing a project, you're so desperate to build that maybe you start to forget who you're building for. And I hope we never forget that again. Uh, anyway, the, the uh, parking garage, the parking garage was going to be under a park, a private Novartis park. Um, so our starting point was that if a parking garage is under the park, uh, it's obvious that they were trying to, they were trying to consider the, uh, the, the park is being used as a suppression of the parking garage. The park is trying to pretend that the parking garage doesn't exist. So our first step is to uh, split the parking, the, the, the park into strips, like the strips of parking below, below ground. The strips of park rise and fall like the, like the parking ramps underground. So now there's a mix of park and parking. At certain points, you can walk out from parking from parking garage to park, and vice and vice and vice and vice and vice versa. Uh, operation opera, operation number eight: uh, an architecture of landscape. Continue, continuing with the Novartis project, the no, the Novartis buildings, the Novartis what they call the Novartis campus, though it's you know, it's not a university, it's a corporation, uh, as are some universities, but uh, uh, the parking garage, the, uh, the Novartis campus is recessed from the street. We thought maybe the Novartis campus should, should get more of a street presence. Now that we had the private park <clears throat> separated into strips, we could stretch those strips, stretch them, uh, stretch them out towards the street. They're supported by arches made from concrete from the from the public sidewalk. So now the Novartis buildings come out come out to, come out to the campus. Uh, another example of stretch is uh, a project we're working on, we're working on now. I want to give just a quick rundown of the project. Then I think you know Dario's worked really intensively on this project. He's worked on other projects too. I mean most of the most of the projects. Maybe you can talk about it. That's what beginning. I thought. He told me. Yeah. He said no, but okay. do you want to talk? Yeah. Why don't Why don't Why don't you? Do you yeah, want to talk yeah, about the question? Uh, I, it's I better. Think the, the reason to showing this this project is uh, is maybe the, uh, as a good example of, of something Vito has brought brought about uh, brought up before uh, when he said that he didn't really know how to how, how, how to do anything, and um, and 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 more and more working with Vito, we find ourselves uh, working on working on projects which we really don't know how to do uh, because uh, we've never. Oh. Uh, uh, we, we've, because we, we've never we've never done projects like that before, and and even even though I studied architecture, uh, I, nothing can really prepare you for for for, for working with Vita. Uh, it, it, it's uh, it's it's so. Uh, but uh, and yeah, but also nothing can push me as much as other people. <laughs> so so it's a so we, we push we push each other around a lot. And um, so, so this project is, is is a good example of that because uh, uh, architects tend not to not to design skate parks. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot a lot of architects seem to have a, a kind of an aversion to to, to skating uh, as it as it seems to, to appropriate 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 architecture to um, to, to skate. Uh, just as 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 a, as, as, a, as a note, uh, this happened because uh, while, while skate parks. Uh, uh, were, were, were kind of a big thing in the 70s. They, they all but, but died out in the, in the 80s. Dur during this period, um, uh, skaters didn't, didn't have uh, a, a lot of places to skate besides, uh, besides some, some friend's skate, uh, some, some, some friend's swimming pool. 
uh, or a place where they could uh, they, they could maybe invade and, 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 and skate. So they started uh, skating whatever was available, and, and that was uh, primarily streets, um, uh, public spaces, parks. Uh, in doing so, they, they probably uh, they, they 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 caused some damage and, and made some noise. But uh, but in, in the process, they they develop a new kind of new kind of skating. Uh, in, in in the nineties now. Um, uh, skate, skate parks had, had a resurgence, probably because uh, the, the, the damage had, had, had gone to a point in which uh, a, a lot of a lot of uh, municipalities started thinking, well, maybe maybe we ought to have a space for these people to, to do this. Um, so uh, we we even though we uh, we we uh, work uh, as I said, work, you know, working on something that uh, uh, we don't know really how to do. Uh, one one of the ways of approaching it, uh, such such a project is to, to 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 find somebody who knows how to do that. And, um, and, and work with them and talk to them. Uh, we, we work with a, a consultant, a skate park builder, somebody who's in, in California, uh, a guy named Zach Wormhout, and uh, he's designed a lot of, a lot of skate parks. Um, and uh, so, so the skate park, look, just, just briefly, the skate park is in, is in San Juan in Puerto Rico. And the site for the skate park is a, a park, a, 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 a large park in front of, in front of, in front of the ocean. Uh, we're going down. Um, in the park, uh, uh, what, what, when, when Vito saw, saw the site uh, the first time, he, he, he noticed that the three, three, three main features in, in, this, in, this, in this part of the park where the site was, uh, three high points. Uh, one is this uh, restaurant that um, is, a, is like a very long, long ramp underneath, underneath which there is a, a restaurant. Uh, the other feature was this mound, uh, a mound in front, in front, of, the, in front of the ocean. Uh, the other one, I'm sorry, uh, an, sorry an oval mound, um, uh, not in front of the ocean. Um, uh, it has an oval, oval-shaped plan, and then another mound, uh, a high, uh, a flat-top mound in front, of, in front of the ocean. So the basic strategy uh, uh, here, 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 you can see the relationship of that that that, that mound to, to, to the ocean. It's right, it's very, 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 very close. Um, so the the strategy, uh, the, the general strategy was than to connect these three high points. Uh, since uh, uh, skating works uh, largely on gravity, we, we had a setup for, for playing with gravity there, high, high points and low points. Um, so how, how, how it's organized is uh, uh, there's, there's a part of the skate park on each of those high points. Uh, uh, on top of the, of, the, of, the, of the restaurant, there is uh, uh, two ramps. Two ramps are, uh, the kind of ramps are called snake runs. Uh, skaters uh, come down from in, in, in with those two ramps and then decide to turn left, left or right. If they decide to turn right, they'll go, uh, okay, well, b before that, uh, uh, between, between these, these, these ramps, um, the park, uh, the existing park uh, still, still, still functions. In a way, we, we overlaid a skate park over a park. Uh, uh, this is different how it's usually done. Uh, skate parks tend to be shoved in a corner. Uh, because of, of, of liabilities and I I issues like that, we decided to uh, uh, try to make a safe park that could, as safe as, as it needed to be, so that it didn't have to be segregated to, 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 to a corner. Um, so uh, at, so you, you turn right and you go into the oval mound. The oval mound now is used uh, as an internal space. Uh, you, you dive into the, the oval mound. Inside the Oval Mound, uh, it's a space of bowls, a space of caverns. Uh, it's uh, a, a, a place where, which, in a way, it's it's taking the notion of, of, of a swimming pool and turning it upside down and, 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 and inside out. Um, on on the opposite side uh, is uh, the, the the mound that's in front of the ocean. Uh, in order to get up that mound. Uh, we have a series of, of steps, of platforms, something like what uh, skaters tend to tend to use uh, 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 on streets. They tend to use uh, uh, steps, edges, uh, uh, rails, uh, anything which uh, uh, w w in which they could use the board uh, uh, without the wheels. Actually, uh, 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 the, the other the other space is is, is more about uh, ro rolling through. This one is about jumping uh, and, and 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 stepping up up onto the mound. Um, at, at the end of these uh, these stepped these stepped platforms are, are half pipes. The half pipes uh, can lever over over the ocean, almost almost trying to deliver the skaters back to back back to the ocean. Because the sk skating started as surfing, uh, basically uh, uh, when it was too cold for surfing, uh, you know, and, and pools were empty, 
uh, uh, young people would, would fashion these, these boards with, 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 with roller skates and, and, and sort of keep, keep, keep having fun during, 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 the, during, during the winter. Um, OK, um, and so uh, just to give a sense of, 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 of you know, a little bit, illustrate just a little bit what it means of, to do something without really knowing how to, how to do it. Uh, it, that our basic strategy is, is is a lot of trial and a lot of error. Uh, probably more error, but uh, also a lot of a lot of a lot of, more more error than anything. But but uh, a lot of trial. Um, and and uh, I just want to give a, a sense of, of, of what what, uh, what what that might look like. Um, it also it's the product of, of the way we work uh, of those discussions uh, uh, when when Vito was talking about. Uh, uh, where, where are you? Where are we now? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it doesn't sound like that. And what do you think, Tom? And it, it, it certainly it doesn't sound like like, like that. We, 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 uh, I, I probably shouldn't try to repeat the kind of things we say. But uh, but it, again, they're, 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 it's it's never it, it's it's it, it's it is confrontational. Yeah, it, 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 it quite is. But it's never about about who's who's right. It's 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 about uh, what 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 makes the more sense. Most sense. Uh, there's ideas. Uh, sorry, this is not coming up. Uh, there's ideas from just about any, every, everybody, every, everybody in the studio. Uh, okay, here, 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 here's a little bit of a catalog of, of possibility. Can you hold, hold up while this is so, for example, uh, different parts. Let's, let's look at, at the oval mound for a second. Uh, these are all studies for what can happen inside this this mound from bowl spaces. Now let's try to connect the bowl spaces in a way that you can go from one to the other. And here again, we're not yet worried about uh, pitches and slopes and, and headrooms. We're we're trying to determine what 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 should happen, not how it should happen. Uh, not yet. At uh, it's, it's as if we, we sort of keep this, uh, keeps this sense of, of everything is possible uh, for as long as possible, um, and until we find something that, that uh, can, can exist in both in the space that excites us and the space that can, can, actually, can, can, actually, can actually happen. Um, another, uh, uh, just, a, just a, 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 so a little bit the evolution of that, 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 that space that uh, is within the, the internal space within 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 the mound. Um, as we work on it, uh, we send our models to our, our consultant, who uh, tells us uh, this radius is wrong, this radius is okay. Uh, here, you're going to kill yourself. Here, uh, not much is going on. Um, and um, and then uh, still, we, we have a, a kind of a hard time visualizing uh, uh, a, such a space. Uh, sometimes we, we I feel we, are, are we complicating things too. Too, too, too much. Are we are we setting up something that we don't know how to? We, we can't predict what the experience will, will be like. So uh, so we, we we resort to 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 as whatever basically we can get our hands on that would would tell us what's what's going on. So uh, for example, uh, we in order to try to ex experience what it's like to to actually go through this space. Uh, Usually, architects tend to do these walkthroughs, and and so we, we, we came up with a skate through, in a way. Uh, it, and it's not a real skateboard; it's, it's more like a hoverboard. Uh, but I, I guess it, it'll it'll work for hoverboards too, eventually. Uh, and uh, and and you can uh, we can now get a bit of a sense of what you could possibly do, in in a, in a place like 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 this. Uh, the, 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 the game was something we basically cannibalized another game and, and replaced the skate park um, and uh, the skate park part and, uh, and, uh, and, and then added uh, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah wouldn't that be cool we're waiting for people we're waiting for, we're waiting for people at MIT to design this sort of yeah but that's just that's, that's, that's all now we need now um, but you know, uh, beyond the the, the 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 fun aspect of things like that, there's 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 the real the real issues of you know, will, will this be skatable? How how do how do we know that? How, how do how do we? Well, uh, we can't. Uh, uh, we can't at least not uh, uh, w without 
uh, thought with help of MIT, we might be <laughs> able to predict very precisely. Uh, but uh, what? So, but still, we try. We try uh, uh, as much as as as, mu as much as we can. So we uh, we study uh, uh, we we study the, for example, one of the one of the snake runs. Uh, we try to study what happens if uh, are we seeing yeah. What happens is if if you just count account for gravity and uh, you know skating is, is a lot more than gravity it's maybe sculpting with gravity <coughs> if you will but uh, so we, we basically draw balls in 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 in, in the surfaces and watch how they behave and uh, you see up on the upper right right corner we have a little problem there and, uh, we would have a big a big a big <laughs> mashup of skaters. Um, and uh, or you know we study it for example like that or we then try let me see if I can find the one with uh, this one might be exactly the same oh no here here's a uh, no oh yeah oh yeah uh, with more 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 like a, a, a crowd of, 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 of marbles this this actually a little bit vi visually is, is, is a bit a, a bit more clear and and here on the upper right corner again we have we have the, the suicide moon. <laughs> that, 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 which we, 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 we dealt with and, and, and now we have a, a better a better a better simulation than that we, 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 we changed that area but uh, uh, basically like that um, and, and and very much all, all, all projects uh, uh, are developed this way uh, we're not sort of following a, 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 in a way we're not following a, a, a sort of a, a vision or, or, or a direction I, I, Sometimes I used to complain to Vito, uh, uh, what, "What are we doing?" And, uh, and 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 a lot of times he says, "I don't know." And uh, and 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 uh, so we keep. All well, we can do is keep going, keep going until. But I do until say we want. We want to find out. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's more on this project in the panel behind, right here. Than yeah. This is a, a a bit of again try to try to give a sense of what goes into coming up with, with something or in developing something something some, something something like that. Um, do you do you wanna do you wanna explain talk a little bit about the, about fashion? Um, okay I'll um, I'll take on uh, where that you used um, you wanna I'll plug in your laptop. Yeah we certainly <laughs> needs needs a switch on that. Um, depending on some of the subjects um, that he chooses to develop, um, one, of, one of them, he might present um, the idea of parasite or the idea of, the idea of virus or the idea of parasites, um, which is a recurring theme in uh, the studio's work and that started I can't be. Oh, it's yeah, here. It is. There's another. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, is this? And uh, um, yeah. and the, the, sometimes um, when we have discussions among ourselves, we we think. I mean, we, we do pose a question: Are we really? Um, are we trying to reflect or illustrate what a parasite is? Um, is like? Are we trying to um, create a sort of um, homology with the way the virus or the parasite acts? Are we aware of the differences between the mode of behavior of a virus or a parasite? I mean, very often we use these words and, um, and <coughs> these words are almost metaphors. Like, when we use the word stretch, we're not literally stretching material. I wish we could more often, and probably in the Milan project, we are quite a bit. Um, just to pick up on some of Vito's categories, when, like the Seoul project, which is a project that we like very much, it's a new project. When we talk about sucking in and sucking out a space, we're not, unfortunately, we're not literally sucking in and sucking out a space. But, so, um, so we're trying to think about the way we're using these words because words is a, 
I mean, at the studio, I think that one of the things we can say is that in the beginning, there's there's the word, um, which is uh, <laughs> which is a great which is a, a great way to start. Um, and often we start with a story as well. It's a great way to start, maybe, but I'm starting to think it's a real outdated way. I can't help but start by thinking in words. But I don't think words are part of the 21st century. And I think <laughs> Serena can tell you what's part of the 21st no, century. Can't. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the 21st century right. is about codes, diagrams, equations. It's not, it's not words. But anyway. So um, I'll start with a project that I don't like so much that we presented very briefly. And I know it's quite naughty to uh, bite the hand that feeds you, but. I hope you'll be indulgent with me. It's this Fulton Street um, project that we've been developed, that we've developed, um, and which looks to me like, I mean, it's very, very phallic <laughs> sort of um, result. And when we had a discussion about this with Vito, I'm just flashing through the images. Vito would say, I mean, Vito would say, but no, 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 it acts like a parasite. It's coming and. And, and sitting on the dome, and, and then I was thinking, well, maybe we should try to think, you know, to try to define a little bit better some of the terms we're using, because we're not acting like a parasite, because this is a public art project, and we're having the, um, we're having the, the sort of supportive authorities. What we're doing really is... Yeah, but we didn't get the project built. They didn't support it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't support it. It is okay. a parasite, no. Okay, it, it is... Mean, it, at least be fair and say why some of us thought it was a parasite. Can, Can you tell us? No, no, no. No, because no, I don't I mean, believe it. One, <laughs> I mean, one of the things... How do you, how do, you do this? Uh, I mean, one of the things that interested us was once we turned this... Yeah, you know, this atrium is great. It's a beautiful space. But people can't, people can't use it. There's all that space up there. And no place, and no place for people. Therefore, therefore, by turning the space inside itself, by turning the space inside itself, we now still allow an atrium space in the middle, but we have this vertical park at the sides, so people now can at least use the atrium and not just, you know, stand below and look up at look up at it in awe. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, and we infiltrate um, in a very radical and subversive way parks and that grow and develop in these huge trees that grow within the atrium. In a but anyway, subversive um, yeah, I, it was just a, a point of departure to say that something that does interest us and something that um, really um, that really um, left a mark on me was when Dario said, and I think other arch echoing also what some other architects said, he'd like to. Ideally, we'd like to do an architecture that grows, an architecture that mutates, an architecture that changes. Um, and so very briefly and succinctly, I'm going to just talk a little bit about this idea of growth and try to tie in a couple of projects with some of the more recent design, um, design products that we're trying to develop right now. Um, and so I'll start with... Um, I'll start with this project, which um, came um, as a, it came during one of Vito's um, came about during one of Vito's exhibitions, and there was a night there was this um, dilemma on how to show his sound archives that have that have just been transferred onto um, that have just been transferred from this old four channel technology to this new technology and. Vito didn't feel comfortable with having headphones or that sort of way of, of, um, of showing, of presenting the archives. So we were thinking together, and between all of us, words like pods came about, and, and Dario and a couple of other um, designers in the studio um, were great. I mean, we were working a little bit together just to define maybe the needs that were in the museum, and we developed this idea of a sound station. So I think that what this project would have in common with the Fulton is that um, it's growth as in expansion, um, which means that it's, uh, it's the volume or the surface or the mass of the object or the space it occupies that, that grows. Um, I also think it's, a, it's like 
assuming that a person is going to be in here, so let's have this space kind of converge around the person, yeah. spiral around the person. Yeah, yeah. So I took it as a center word for this notion of expansion, maybe the word of extension. Um, and then there's a project that we like very much, um, which is a billiard table that's going to be built by Zahadi for Mount Indiana. And there was this very interesting um, element of what would have been a fourth leg that's just, it looks like it was stunted in its growth. And um, in a way, I mean, of course, we could have shown, like, we could, we could talk about um, the idea of something that sprouts and the idea of, you know, um, I mean, all these ideas of, of, um, of growth and emergence that have been very much written about. But we thought that there was something almost a, a, like an anomaly about this particular, um, this particular um, design, which we found kind of inspiring. Um, and so, for example, in one of the projects that we're trying to develop, um, getting into the fashion project, we're designing these epaulettes that could be put onto any sort of garment, really, at the last minute, maybe one, maybe two. And ideally, what we would like is that the, the extensions from these epaulettes would grow, that we could pull on them, and that the, the length would be variable, for example. It could pull one way. Of course, it ha would have to retract after that. So this is um, <coughs> just quickly. Um, and the idea of extension is a project of, um, that, of a country studio. What's the date of where you go? 99. Of 99, um, where, um, can you talk about Basically, it's a house, what kind of slide is this? Is this yeah, the slide? general slide. I mean, basically, we did a kind of uh, wannabe, wannabe, wannabe archogram uh, uh, project. Uh, uh, with the, we were asked to do something uh, uh, on the notion of a, uh, Micro micro environment. So we we suggested a project where uh, an external skeleton would be screwed, would be screwed into your bones. Uh, <clears throat> now that you have this external skeleton, you know it's it's made of telescoping parts, hinging parts, so you can move around it pretty free. You can move around with it pretty freely, except that you have the skeleton the skeleton on your back. Uh, you don't need furniture. Because anytime, because you can just pull down the telescoping legs and you can become your own furniture. Uh, uh, you carry this backpack. Uh, you can release the backpack uh, uh, so that you're where you're. You don't just have, it, it, you don't just have a house. You kind of are your house. Now that you are your house, other people can come in. It's a private house. Not everybody's allowed in. Like that person is is climbing on the roof because it's a private house, <laughs> like, it, like, it, like it or not. Um, so basically, you have your private house, and you're also like screwed to your own house, which is the idea of aesthetics, which, um, which still, we're, so we're still in this idea of um, extensions, prosthetics. So um, it was interesting to speak with Vito, but I'll come back to this later, about what he thought were the limits of this, even though it was just a sort of theoretical idea. And why I was always nagging him that there was something very 19th century about the, the whole idea. One that, and something that I found very seductive, but that seemed to, to, bother, to bother you a little bit. Um, so the second part of growth, um, the second dimension, um, is the one of multiplication. Um, and as a sort of central word, we could use the idea of code or seriality. And I was very um, interested to see that in some of Vito's earlier work, creating a country studio, there was already this desire to um, to explore um, the idea of modular furniture, for example, or something, a, a system that would define a form, the ultimate form. So I mean, I think in here you can see it better, where every part is in relation, negative or positive, to the part that's right next to it, the idea of pattern that emerges. And here, um, four-story table, which is um, basically four tables. Is that it? I mean, you take four more tables, and then you can well, It's like a, a, a very little table inside a normal table, which it turns inside a larger table. Larger table, like that, largest table. 
largest at the top acts as a kind of band of place to sleep in. So, um, so recently we tried to develop, um, well, actually, we, again, in a museum context, um, maybe I'm showing that because that was, and that's an environment that I'm more accustomed to, but um, maybe it's like, well, one thing you see is gives us the opportunity to try this out. Uh, and before we put it, put it, put it on, on, on the screen, in, in a way, uh, they're, 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 they're asking for art, and, uh, and we don't give it to them. We, we, we give them a space for people instead of uh, a trial of, of, of a public space. So we try CD, we try uh, a place for film. It, 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 it's, it's, uh, we, 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 we're pretty good at tricking them into, 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 into doing, them, do, doing these things for us. Uh, but anyway, so for this we had a problem um, trying to figure out what could be a quick, easy, and um, cheap way of, design of developing city. So here we took, we actually, the walls of the, are made out of um, acoustic foam. And in the end, we thought, right, well, why don't we just take um, a little section of that acoustic foam, blow it up, um, change the scale. So it really is something close to four story table, but I, I just thought about it maybe a couple of days, like the relation, that there might be a relationship between them. But, and then what's fantastic, what was a great, um, what was great about it is that these would fit as mod modular, this would become a modular um, furniture where people could actually lie down or sit down, or sit, sit low, sit high, etc. So it's basically, um, the, the seating is a reflection of the surface of the, uh, of the what do we call them? The layer of the layer. This is something that we'd like to develop um, maybe um, with people and MIT hopefully. Um, and it's a system, it's a system also of modular furniture, except that here, um, please pardon the um, quality of the of the renderings. They're not we put this up very quickly just as a sort of way of explaining the project, but we haven't actually designed it yet. But one side would be um, a rigid, hard surface, and the other side would be a soft surface. And if we're able to develop, uh, to, to know more and to apply a system of modular curvature, we can imagine that all of these different components would fit smugly within themselves uh, next to each other, at least on one side. And then you could decide which side you wanted to be a table just by flipping them over, and you could decide on the size of the table, and you could decide on the size of the, the seating area, which would be soft, et cetera, et cetera. So this is something that we're working on right now. And within, um, um, I think, oh, and so I just wanted to show a fashion project that I think has um, really been inspirational to us even I mean, it, it's actually fed back a little bit into the way we're thinking about designing and architecture, is this project of Issey Miyake, and I think it's actually not, there's a second name, Dai Fuyama, who presents this APOC book, in which this project is contained. And it's a quite a revolution within the fashion industry because everything is, um, the whole, a whole multitude of clothing is, are made from one, from a knitting machine, where each individual is based on a coat, on a coat, on a variation of that coat. So there's a second dimension to this project. At least the second dimension is that the user cuts up and can um, can customize a piece of clothing. But what interests me particularly is the fact that it's based like one computer feeds off information to a knitting machine, which will create this huge, huge room of clothing and. There's something interesting in the, in the shift in the mode of production and the way we can think about it in the new clothing. Um, then there's, um, there's, um, there's another side of to growth that we are thinking about and it's a side of mutation. And then the, the, the word that we're using in the center is metamorphosis. Um, this is a project that Garrett Riccardi um, introduced to us it's a, a clothing project by Alexander McQueen, which is very beautiful, as you'll see, it spreads out like this. And um, this is um, something that's been interesting us more and more, and that we're trying to incorporate at least within our fashion um, design. And it's 
the idea of mutation which interests us is that it's a change inherent to the identity of the object towards something else. So it's growth that, because it's a sort of transition between two states. Uh, of course, um, Ovid's Metamorphosis is the sort of book that people often think about in terms of um, that sort of metamorphosis in, you know, like um, Daphne and the law and the laurel tree, et cetera, et cetera. But this is, I wanted to just present this because this is the way we're thinking about um, design right now. Sometimes Guido will say, I want us to develop a system of cutlery where everything will stay on one hand. And we, we say, well, what would you like it to look like? And he goes, something that goes like this. So it took me ages and a lot of patience to try to understand what Vito meant by, Vito who's so articulate by going. And then the other day he presented um, an excerpt of his film by Dave Cronenberg and suddenly I understood what he meant. And this was an interesting, this was interesting to me in relation to uh, the World in Your Bones project. And this is the last thing I'm show right now, but it's basically this man takes the gun out of his um, bosom and um, out of his stomach, and the gun starts growing and mingling with the tendons in his hands, like that. So instead of like just and so his, his own hand metamorphoses into this instrument, object, um, organ, and this weird sort of thing. So, I mean, I don't think our design is going to look like this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, the, the concept of metamorphosis is something that interests us very much right now. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, it's kind of late. I would love to go through. Uh, you can tell me the I do because just, I can just quickly try to. Uh, I don't know how to do it. Start talking now to get. Actually, though, I mean, instead, I think maybe instead of continuing, even though there's other stuff to do, I would have loved to have continued with the World Trade Project. But I think we've talked a long time, and it might be good if we turn on the lights and see if anybody wants to talk with us since we're so used to talking with each other. Maybe some other people can talk. Spend twenty million dollars. The client wants to make sure that it looks like 
they spent twenty million dollars. So, uh, uh, but you know, there's other 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 aspects to that too. But at, at a very basic level, it, it, it has a very similar sim similar function, uh, you, you know, from from the body to the, to clothes to your corridor to your building, to your city to to. So it's it's it's, it's a step in between. And it seems to be the you know first first part. First architecture, you have a body. Now you put some cover around it. This cover is called clothing. You know, then the body covered by clothing sits, sits in sits in furniture, sits in a chair. That in turn is in a room. But I think there's something else too, though. Uh, I think that the the architecture of the future has to be not the architecture that you go to, but the architecture you carry with you. Uh, the architecture of the future is probably for a future in which there are you know, no countries, no boundaries. So we're all nomads. We carry our house like the, like the, like the turtle. You know. Instead of having to go home, uh, you just sort of fold up inside inside your shell, inside your clothes. You are home. Uh, yeah, you're already, you're already, you're already there. Uh, I mean, and I think one of the sure signs that that is the future is is the amazing uh, conservatism and nationalism of almost every country now. It's a kind of last ditch attempt to, you know, when we know there aren't going to be countries anymore, well, let's have a last ditch attempt to keep the immigrants out. You know? Just as maybe, you know, maybe in a time when we know that we're probably not going to have bodies much longer, everybody, you know, goes to the, goes to the gym. You always try to keep, you always try to keep the old world because you know it's changing. You know. Um, you know, he, 
he asked certain questions and those questions were, were, were answered, uh, 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 you know, at, at, at their time. I think that we're still in the process of, of a answering questions, the questions that are maybe raised by, by, by the notions that, that Serena mentioned. But um, back, to, back to what you were saying about skating, you know, I've, I, in, in working on this project, I, I, was, I was incredibly surprised because I've always, uh, you know, I'm not a skater. Um, then again, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a musician and, and I, love, I love music. I think our, our interest in skating and our interest in science is like our interest in music. And none of us can really carry a tune. But, uh, but, but uh, we, we, were, we were very, very, very interested in, 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 in them. Not so much. Uh, to get a sense of what it should be, but maybe to allow ourselves to think of what it could be or what it can be, and 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 and, and specifically in skating uh, right now, because I, I mean I've, I've I found some of the most conservative skaters I've, you've ever met, you, you could ever think of, and I don't know to to us it, skating was about freedom, uh, and 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 then to find so much about. Uh, no man, that's not how it should be. Uh, it was was kind of a, a letdown and a disappointment. Again, we, we probably didn't talk to the right skaters, and and that's probably pro probably the reason. It could be. It could very well be. Uh, you know, we're outsiders in 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 pretty much everything we do, uh, and um, and you know we we have we there, there's it's inevitable uh, uh, in the in the kinds of things we, we we try to do at least. So there's always that risk. Uh, you know, we even if we try to do a, a, a more, you know, I suppose the word would be conventional skate park, uh, we wouldn't know how to do it uh, uh, any any more that we know how to do this one. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, it's just that this seems to excite us more than than anything. But, but let me be clear: I'm not talking about a conservative notion of what a skate park is. No, I, I mean, I mean more state of mind uh, about things are this way, and you know, I don't want to talk about how they could be. That's that's all, all I would say. I don't say that it should outsiders shouldn't sign skate parks. That's yeah, yeah. Not the idea at all. It's just that, that the act of discovery yeah. of familiar through skate parks, yeah. like you see a railing and you think, imagine if I could actually levitate myself on this railing and slide down this thing. And that's like, that sounds very right. But that's true, but uh, but it, does it have to be a rail? No. I mean, one of the one one, one beautiful thing I found out, uh, you know, you know, when, when I was I was I was talking to 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 to, to people, uh, you know, wh why do you why do you need stairs? Because you know you're jumping basically from the top of the stair to the bottom of the stair. Uh, I mean, do there have to be steps in between? Don't you just need basically a place to jump from? And and this guy said something really beautiful. He said, well, you know, if there's steps, you can count the steps. And if I can count the steps, you know, I can say, well, I can jump 10 steps. Uh, and, you know, and there's something perfectly valid about that explanation and, 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 and humbling. And, like, oh, my God, we need to, you know, we, we need to account for this in some way. And, you know, I, I gave a very, very brief, you know, I didn't want to, to turn it, the, the, the presentation into, into, into the skate park presentation. I just wanted to give a bit of a sense of how we work and the kind of things we, we sort of touch on when, when, when we work, that, that, that's all. Um, uh, you know, we, we're, 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 we're showing the park constantly to skateboarders and, you know, and, and you know, initially it's like, oh, that, careful with that. And then I go, wait, wait, okay. Say you walking down this park and you have your skateboard in your hand and you see this, would you skate it? And they'll say, well, yeah. Uh, but still, you have to, you know, okay, so, so I mean, that discussion we, we, we can have, and we still do have, and, and again, it's in development, and, and we listen, we listen very, 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 very carefully. Um, so, I yeah. yeah. Sorry. So, there's this one quote that um, I found kind of interesting in what you pointed out, and maybe that there was something, there was a jump also that was done within the presentation. There's one thing that has remained from Vito's very early work now, and maybe we didn't present that clearly enough, is the idea of having a scheme. So some, from something like falling piece or even from pieces of poetry, there's something that's kind of beautiful when you're looking at that period of Peter's work because you can see the evolution of the scheme um, and a certain coherence to this in this evolution. Now the scheme still exists. It just reached, um, it just has a end and it's still there and 
it's still there within the descriptions as well. And what's kind of interesting is the way, and I think maybe it is a limit sometimes, but it's something that characterizes the work, the early work in Tuo now, it's the importance of the plot. And um, that's why we decided with, with Larissa that maybe it was good to show the descriptions of the project in this room, because better you have time, although they're pretty lengthy, and we shouldn't really expect people to have time to read this sort of stuff, but you'll see that there's, there's still the idea of plot and scheme within. You know, I, I want to say, uh, maybe you mentioned something about what you said about about the change in language or the what you call an esoteric language. I, I didn't know you were referring to verbal language as much as a visual language. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I, one thing I feel so deeply committed in is that, committed to is that, you know, I want the stuff we design, even though I don't think we, we've lived up to the same, or can live up to the same. I want the stuff we design to be stuff that couldn't possibly have been built, couldn't possibly have been designed, and probably couldn't even possibly have been thought of before the, the uh, 21st century. I feel sure that the only way to design now is, you know, with the, with the, with the, with the computer. But I gotta find another word than with, because I think we haven't quite reached it yet. I mean, maybe we're using the computer too much. We have to, we have to, uh, we have to nudge the computer. I know Dario, who knows the computer much more than I do, says that it doesn't really work that way, but I'm not so sure. I think we have to, we have to learn to not tell the computer what to do, but to, to nudge and pet until it, <laughs> until it trusts us and, uh, and, and, and is able to, you know, is able to do something that couldn't have been, uh, you know, couldn't have been thought before, couldn't have been designed before. I mean, I, I, I think this, this is potentially the most incredible time in architecture uh, in many, 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 many years. But at the same time, it's the time of a, you know, new invention. And it's probably very similar to the way it was in the Renaissance when perspective was discovered, you know. And everybody's drawings look probably exactly the same. Until somebody made a mistake, you know. <laughs> until somebody made, you know, some incredible flaw. And now I think, you know, yeah, but when you know when when you know, we have some stuff in the uh, in the uh, architectural uh, architectural biennale in Venice two years ago. And all the people we liked, you know, it was hard to, it was hard to, it was hard to separate. But I wonder if that's, if that's necessary now. That until somebody figures out how to make a mistake, how to make a real good mistake with the language, that uh, maybe it's a testing time. You know? Yes. 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 Uh, what are your new thoughts about encroachment now? Everything we see been through the takeover ability of an underground span, borders going across parking lots. What are the new kinds of directions you're thinking in this regard? Encroachment. Uh, I mean, when when Serena was talking about parasite and virus. Uh, uh, I mean, I think that's the kind of field, uh, field of approach we never got to. Se never got to some of those projects, except the Fulton Street project. But I, I uh, we did a project in Sao Paulo. Well, we didn't do it. We uh, proposed a project in Sao Paulo a few years ago, uh, based on the elevated highways in Sao Paulo. Since elevated highways have cut through neighborhoods, killed neighborhoods. So we tried to make this housing, not exactly houses to live in, but a kind of community housing that uh, clung on to the underside of the highways, elevated off the street for people who are forced to live on the street. In a lot of ways, I think we should, you know, one thing that I love about doing architecture is that we get a program to follow. But one thing I, I start to hate is that are we always following somebody else's move? 
shouldn't start to make the first move. That we're, when we're asked to do a project, we're reacting to a program somebody else has you know, already given us. And I, you know, I, I think the ideal, what I would really like our architecture to act as is a parasite and a virus. You, know, you cling on to buildings where people aren't supposed to go. You make places for people where they're not where they're not supposed to be. There are a lot of buildings with you know blank walls. Why not use them for people? You know, why not if there's a lamppost at a corner? Why can't there be a spiral staircase? Somebody can, like some strange saint, can sit at the top of a can sit at the top of a lamppost. You know, I, I mean, I, ideally, what I want our stuff to do, and I don't think we've come close to this, is make places for people where they aren't allowed they aren't allowed to be. I mean that's why that Fulton Street project interests me, I think, more than it interests Serena because that notion of this extra space for people, you know, there's all that space up there, you know, and it's uh I hate awe. I hate spaces that lead to awe. Uh, you know. I love a lot of Richard Serra's new stuff, but I wish there was a hot dog stand. I wish there was something to do there, except just feel that, you know, I am going to look up and feel wow. You know, I felt wow as a child. You know, you don't have to feel wow now. I mean, I want our stuff to liberate me. Can it ever do that? I don't know, but it's the only thing worth, worth trying. Also, in, in, encroachment was, uh, it, when, when the work was in the context of public art, it's pretty much everything it could be uh, because you know it's part of an existing space it's always an add-on to an existing space uh, you know uh, it's one percent of the budget so it, it almost it, it's inevitable position is that to be something that is a parasite something that's attached to and sure you might make an effort to make it appear as it was always there or, uh, or, or it belongs there uh, but it, it, uh, unless you're building from the ground up, unless you're, you're, you're making a place, you're always uh, 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 put in the position of being part of a place and, uh, and making choices as to how, how to be part, part of that place. Yeah. Maybe you should tell from architecture, you know, and head towards uh, city planning. <laughs> Redesign one of these cities that disappeared last month. <laughs> Would I love to do a city? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Serena's brought up notions of utopia a lot. We didn't talk about it. But we don't agree about this within the studio, so <laughs> I mean, we'll sort it out. I love the idea of utopia as an intention. I hate it if it's ever reached. So if we're going to build a city, somebody else is going to come in and, and uh, uh, mess it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was actually just wondering if you were the opposite end of the scale. Have you ever thought about doing book design? Or like, can you imagine the way it's done in that experience? Uh, book design? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, in a way, uh, it's funny because uh, what, when uh, we, we have it. We're, we're in the process of having a new web page now, and um, one one of the, the, the critiques of, of that we had of, of, of web pages is that it's very basically like at least in, in, in most way versions of what we see, it, it's almost like these glorified books. It's a it's a very advanced way of turning pages, um, and we try to to think of okay how 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 can this be different? I mean here we have. Uh, of this amazing landscape with, this, it, with its own laws and, and we're almost forcing it to behave, uh, uh, you know, we're in Mars and we're trying to make Mars feel like Earth. And uh, let's just hop around in Mars for a while. And so, in, in a way, we, we, that, that's the way we approach, approach that. I'm not sure, I mean, we, we, we struggle with graphic design. Yeah, we're, we're, um, really, we're really bad at We're it. not very good graphic designers. <laughs> I don't think we understand two-dimensional two space. Uh, uh, that sounds great. We say, oh, we don't understand two-dimensional space. We're just 
We're just bad. We're just bad. Uh, I understand the space where I can put my feet in. I mean, the reason I've always hated art was because of two-dimensional space. The reason I hated art, the reason I hated art was that you, the viewer, are supposed to stand here and the art is there. So you're always in the position of desire and that desire will always be frustrated. You know? uh, the reason, you know, I like spaces you can touch and you're not supposed to touch art. And you're not supposed to touch art because art is more expensive than people. Uh, I like the space where you can touch it, you know. But the, one of the um, only things, the only sort of objects or material objects that Vito has ever shown an interest for are books. And in the studio, we live on books, we eat over books, and, and CDs. we blow up books. And CDs. CDs, too. And, CDs, and videos. But CDs are more compact, and they're a newer phenomenon. The collection of books is about your age. And um, we were very, very interested and very curious in, um, in, this, in book design, actually. Um, and we, um, it's more and more within architecture now. Um, more and more groups of architecture have their own in-house designers, and books, the architecture of books, or some of these publications are actually mini manifestos. And we're actually limited by our inability not to I, I be able to hire someone that we would enjoy working with to design books with us, or um, or our own limits. Yeah, we would love to have a graphic designer in the studio. We'd love to have a landscape architect. We'd love to have a, a product designer. You know, I mean, we want a kind of mix of designs. I mean, I mean, what Serena's saying about books is true. At the same time, I think both Serena and I have admitted to each other that we don't read as much as we used to. And I don't think you should read that much in the 21st century. So we collect books. It's too fast, you know? I even don't see movies as much as I used to. I would see movies more if they could be projected on buildings down a city street. So, uh, you know, why, I, mean, I think we're interested in music more. Why? Because you can do other things while you're listening to music. Just as in architecture, you're meant to do other things. The 21st century is about multiple attention, things that demand single focus, or maybe a little bit uh, from another time. You know, how many books do you buy a week? I buy books, I buy a lot, I buy a lot of money. But, but just the fact that they're there is enough. I don't have to read them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if I feel, you know, I, I can sort of pass by and skim. I mean, skimming is great. You know? yeah. Reading is maybe too much focus and attention. Uh, it seems like more and more the best, the books we prefer the most are the ones you can start reading from any page. And and they still are significant. There's still something, some, something in them. Um, uh, uh, but um, actually, actually we, we, we are getting better at graphic design thanks to Dolly, who's an architect. She's not a graphic designer, but uh, uh, she's, she's helping us a lot. She had, she, had, she had some more experience than, 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 than we did. Um, for a graph, we, we would think of graphics a lot as, as, as part of presentations. And I think, I, th I think that's wrong. I think there's something in, the, in, in there that uh, we could uh, distill you know, back into space. And uh, we just don't, 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 don't know enough about it which doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really discourage us. Yes? Any sacrifices, you said? Yeah. Were there any sacrifices that were uh, <clears throat> Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, in the sense that in art you can do anything you want. Of course you can, because nobody in the world cares. And in architecture, in architecture, you're dealing with an everyday world with everyday rules and conventional rules. So yeah, you can, you know, but you can find ways to be inventive. You know, if you're forced to do something, if you're forced to do a railing, if you have a space that's over three feet high, but you don't want something to announce as a railing. Then maybe you can find you could be more inventive than you, than you ever thought you could be, because you can camouflage this this realm. Sure, you give you give up a lot, you give up something to be in this world that other people share. But I think it's kind of worth it. Maybe, maybe there's a form of opportunism also that
is still considered as an artist by many people has uh, been beneficial to um, his early stages in architecture. Now you can really say that it's enough to get help us win competitions anymore. Um, and there still are a couple of commissions, but I think it was probably helpful in Peter's early stage of public art. Yeah, I, I don't know, I mean, one thing about art that now I, I find it almost impossible. Uh, yeah, you, know, I, 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 you know, I said a statement that maybe was a little bit exaggerated, that in art you can do anything, anything you want. Not necessarily. You can do anything you want as long as this is current in certain art magazines at a, cer at a certain time. Uh, uh, so I'm not sure if you can really, if you can really do anything. Uh, one thing about art, though, is that you have the illusion that you can do something, that you can do anything. And I find that a position that if somebody says, do anything you, I mean, that's one reason why lately we've decided we can't do public art projects anymore. Because there isn't a program, you know. And, you know, all we can do is make places to, places to sit down. And, you know, I think we've made some nice places, but then we think, couldn't it be both your parents? Have done, have done, have done the same. Uh, I, a program gives you something to have a dialogue with, have a discussion with, have an argument with. Do anything you want uh, is a difficult situation. For you. I mean, I think there's some people in the studio, and I think Guido also thinks that better is good art than bad folly than you know public art. Situation, and that's the big danger of public art is that sometimes we end up producing follies um, because of the restrictions of a of a situation, the scope, the lack of yeah, or the or the lack of restrictions. I mean, I'm talking about restrictions because once or twice we had a plaza and we weren't really able to build anything that was architectural, so we were basically being constrained to build something that was sculptural, and that sort of. Um, almost like, it almost like a demonstration of well, what if we were really free to do what I mean? <laughs> what, what, what it would be this what it looks like. And uh, again, it, it, I think we're, 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 we're more interested in, in, in doing, doing something that uh, is, is, is inherently existing. By, 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 by itself. Uh, uh, really, really, really existing within public space, not just sort of uh, making the content of public space, but being being part of it, being 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 within it. Well, at the same time, I think I I I I sometimes think that if we weren't given programs to follow, maybe we could spend more time uh, designing a car or you know designing clothes, uh, designing something. And I, and I'm convinced that these are the more the more important spaces for this century and the coming century. This is a time of capsules. You know. Public space is not a plaza. The only reason a plaza exists is that a large number of people in the city are put together in one place, and the city can, the city can exercise some surveillance system on them. You know. Public space exists in alleys and back rooms. It exists, uh, it exists in, in movement. And uh, you know, I think everybody's notion of public space has changed. Uh, first of all, you know, by the by the by the computer. I know when I first started using a computer, I thought this is an incredibly progressive space. It's like reading, but obviously it's not. You know, but it's a very different notion of public space than than we had before. So a mix of that, a mix of that at 9/11, where everybody feels you know you have to have a protection, is, it leads I think to the notion of a capsule. Maybe public space in the future consists of everybody wears, everybody is inside some capsule. Every once in a while these capsules bump and join for a while. But then they separate, become capsules again, and then they reach join with other capsules. The very different notion of public is that we've ever had before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.